Now I'm in a position to prove that it is rhubarb, right? Because I'm in um. This, for example, is a story in the Daily Star that concerns me nearly getting smacked in the mouth by Tamara Beckwith, right? Well, let me tell you this. I have never in my whole life been in a room with Tamara Beckwith. Never met her, never spoke to her, never been anywhere near her. And here is a detailed story in the star, about 300 words, of how she nearly smacked me in the mouth, right? And this article, right, is a complete fabrication. Total lies. From its inception to its denouement, there ain't one single... Oh yeah, I know the word denouement. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thanks, cheers, appreciate it, guys. Throughout this article, there ain't one word of truth. Honestly, not one word of truth. Whole thing's a lie. Not a single word of truth. Not one. I'll read it to you. Randy Russell Brand... All right, one true word. Randy Russell Brand got into big bother with posh Tamara Beckwith. The night culminated in her threatening to punch him in his big mouth. Right. How this article functions is it by running in parallel two ideas. <laughs> that is a literal anatomical mouth. It's by running these two ideas in tandem that this article is constructed. Tis ruba. <laughs> the Big Brother's Big Mouth presenter, 30, has a penchant for posh blondes. I ain't got a penchant for posh blondes. That is a way of losing about 80% of your market. <laughs> So his mojo went into overdrive when he saw the plum-voiced fox at London's Opium Club. Plum-voiced fox, right? If you take the idiom plum in one's mouth, meaning talks posh, and contract that to plum-voiced, then take the adjective foxy meaning sexy and change it to the noun fox, then co-join that to plum-voiced fox, you don't get a posh, sexy bird what talks all proper. You get a perverted Beatrix Potter character. <laughs> you get a fox in a waistcoat <laughs> with a pocket watch. Hello. Good evening. For I am the plum-voiced fox. I bid you good evening. Would you care for a glass of mint? <laughs> Stupid. The big haired pixie, me. <laughs> the big haired pixie started his woo a thon. It's like it's been written by Tolkien. <laughs> the big haired pixie started his woo a thon by asking if he could borrow Tamara's eyeliner. Right. Given that I've never met her, never been in a room with her, what a specific lie to tell. Why that lie? Why not say, um, I don't know, right, uh, uh, the Neptunian underworld king unleashed a barrage of eels from his abdomen and each of the eels was carrying a Zippo lighter and as they flew by, they spelt across the sky in fire, Tara, I can't borrow your eyeliner, please. <laughs> Don't make stuff up, go mental. <laughs> she just wanted to have a good night out with her teenage daughter, and she said the eyeliner opener was the worst chat up line she'd ever heard. Oh, really? Well, stick around, because I've got worse. <laughs> the worst of all being simply get in the van. <laughs> offered to buy her a drink, but she snapped she already had one and promptly legged it away from him onto the dance floor. However, Russ is made of sterner stuff, so he boogied towards her. <laughs> I ain't boogied anywhere. I do not boogie places. And the simple reason I don't boogie is because me boogieing somewhere looks like this.
That is not a way I wish to travel. <laughs> it was at this point he started wiggling his elfin bum in Tamara's horrified mush. I'm not 12 foot tall. <laughs> Tamara lost patience. She snapped at Brand. You're the one with the big mouth, aren't you? Thrilled that she'd finally acknowledged his famous self, Russell nodded enthusiastically. <laughs> I don't mind a lie story saying I nodded. Nodding looks like this. <laughs> I do resent a lie story saying I nodded enthusiastically. That looks like this. <laughs> It is a gesture unlikely to lead to coitus. <laughs> You're the one with the big mouth, aren't you? She continued, if you don't leave me alone, you'll get a smack in it. Right, that is the apex of the article where the figurative big mouth and the literal anatomical mouth meet in a collision of language, an explosion of ideas. Tis <laughs> Poor Russell was horrified to be spurned in front of his jeering pals. They got jeering pals. My friends are not Sid James, Leonard Rossiter, and Albert Steptoe. <laughs> <laughs> People like Trevor Locke. Gentlemen. Jeering pals. <laughs> he rarely has to go back to Brand Towers on his lonesome. I live in a one bedroom flat. <laughs> Lil Russell has had the pleasure of a galaxy of celebrities, then it lists some and it goes, add to those a host of prostitutes. A host of prostitutes. Not just one or two, an host of them. Imagine a 1940s musical sort of tiered wedding cake set with a cabaret line of prostitutes in top hat and tails sort of cascading down like a human whore waterfall. With each kick, they get more and more deteriorated and they'll crack at it. <laughs> host of prostitutes. A host of prostitutes, pals and distant relatives. Surely that's libelous. Surely that. Distant relatives. I've not fucked anyone in my family. No matter where they live. Geography's really not the issue. It's more of a moral position, really. The moyfied fop, me again, <laughs> laughed off his failure, saying, I'm a sexy wild man. <laughs> I did not say I'm a sexy wild man. I did not say that. I'm a sexy wild man. She didn't have to see my winky if she didn't want to. I hope my bachelor ring, David Walliams, Beppe, <laughs> and Callum Best don't hear about this. That, right. that is because on that program Big Mouth, I, for a laugh, pretend to be a member of this thing called the womanising circuit. It's just a laugh, it's made up, it's for a laugh. Now, as it turns out, I am friends with David Walliams, right? But, Beppe <laughs> is a fictional character <laughs> from EastEnders about ten years ago. This is Pepe. There is no Pepe. There ain't, never was, and never can be a Pepe. He is an actor, what is called Michael Greco. And I've never met him. Ridiculous. Just made up. And if they'll lie about something that trivial, just to make you believe what they want to believe about something as ludicrous as me, then they'll lie to you about anything, to manipulate you into believing all sorts of things, I don't know, wars, oil, stuff like that. You know, it's not worth getting out of bed some mornings. <laughs>